Hi, we are celebrating Reconciliation Week this week. It occurs every year from the 27th of May to the 3rd of June. Let's start off by talking about some of the key dates. Reconciliation Week is the idea that all Australians should celebrate and acknowledge the reconciliation that needs to happen between Indigenous Australians and the rest of Australia. On the 26th of May each year, we commemorate National Sorry Day, which is the idea of remembering and commemorating the mistreatment of Indigenous peoples during the Stolen Generation era. An important report highlighting this was brought to the government on this day in 1997. If you're like me and you're wondering why Reconciliation Week starts on the 27th and not on the 26th, it's because uh, Sorry Day happened after uh, Australia started acknowledging Reconciliation Week. Uh, it actually begun by a group of Christian churches around Australia praying for reconciliation for Aboriginals, and then uh, after that became a national-wide thing, and then after that, Sorry Day uh, was introduced, um, especially after uh, Kevin Rudd's speech called the Apology Speech, which we'll, we'll talk about later in the video. On the 27th of May, uh, we celebrate national referend the national re referendum of the Australian Constitution, uh, which was changed to allow laws to be created to benefit and acknowledge Indigenous peoples as Australian citizens. Uh, and this was passed uh, on the 27th of May 1967. So it was a big step in um, getting more equality for Aboriginals and Indigenous people of Australia. And finally, on the 3rd of June, uh, we, we call it the Mabo decision. Uh, we, we remember uh, a great momentous time in politics and in terms of uh, rights for Aboriginals, which is when the Australian High Court acknowledged the Indigenous land rights and ownership to the traditional landowners of uh, the people who lived in and still do live in the East Torres Strait Islands. And this happened on 1992. And again, we'll talk about that later in the video. So, what is reconciliation? Um, to begin with, I think it's great to start off with the idea that we know as Christians that Jesus has the mission in reconciling all things, including the inequality and mistreatment of Indigenous Australians. So we have in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, For God has pleased, was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. A quote that I found on the website reconciliation.org, it says, At its heart, reconciliation is about strengthening relationships between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and non-Indigenous peoples for the benefit of all Australians. In short, reconciliation is the idea of making change and fixing things that have been broken and need forgiveness. It is important that we know that Jesus is reconciling all things, meaning that he is fixing the issues facing Aboriginals of Australia, as well as all the other issues that we face in life, including fixing our relationship with him by defeating sin on the cross for us. During Reconciliation Week, we focus on the particular reconciliation of mending the brokenness of what Australia has done to its Indigenous peoples. And that's a really important thing as well. Why do we need reconciliation? There are many things that happened during early colonisation to begin with. So during the early European settlement of Australia, uh, countless monstrosities took place during the colonisation of Australia. Over the course of about 200 years, uh, hundreds of thousands of Aboriginals have either either died um, because of disease that the settlers brought by accident, or uh, they unfortunately died because they were shot or mistreated by the European Europeans taking their land. Indigenous people uh, were seen as something that we call flora and fauna, which is uh, it just means that they are no better than plants and animals of the land. So the Europeans treated them like this because um, they, they called the land something called terra nullis, which is a, a Latin word meaning land belonging to no one. They, they didn't see the Aboriginals as people 
owning the land they lived in so they could do whatever they wanted with them even though they knew that the aboriginals lived there there's a a thing called the native title act and this is the idea from uh, 1788 until recently uh, australian law did not acknowledge the aboriginal and torres strait island islander people and uh, didn't give them rights to their own land that um, they have always lived in uh, however, until 1992, in the Mabo or Mabo judgment, which we'll talk about later, uh, we've we learn a little bit more about um, things called um, land being uh, handed back to its its uh, original custodians. We'll talk about that soon. Another thing we need to be uh, have reconciliation over is the stolen generation, and this uh, was something that spanned roughly between about 1910 and 1970 and was what the government decided to do with Aboriginal children who were born with some form of European descent. Uh, they, they called these children a half caste because they were, they, as the government saw them, half Aboriginal, half uh, what they would say is, is a white person. And because of that, they decided what was best was to forcibly remove these children from their families, their mums and dads, and their brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles, and they would bring them uh, to special camps and special places to teach them to basically forget their heritage and their family and learn how to live like the rest of the English people. Um, so, yeah, one of those things is uh, can you put yourself in their shoes and what would it be like for you if you were uh, taken from your family, forced, and they don't want you to leave, but... Um, the government take you and, and bring you up in another place and tell you that the way you've been living is wrong and that you need to learn how they live, which is the best way to live. Um, yeah, it's it's a very horrible thing to happen. And um, so that's, that's part of what we look at for National Sorry Day. So it's otherwise known as the National Day of Healing uh, and it's held on the 26th of May each year. So... Uh, in short, there was a report called the Bringing Them Home Report, and that was a, a very large document going into a lot of the details about uh, what happened with the um, stolen generation. The aim on National Sorry Day is to remember and commemorate the mistreatment of Australia's Indigenous peoples as part of an ongoing process of reconciliation between the Indigenous peoples and all peoples who have settled in Australia. There was two famous speeches that you may or may not have heard of. So the first one was by um, one of Australia's prime ministers called Paul Keating and his speech at Redfern Park in Sydney on the 10th of December. It was known as the Redfern speech. So I won't play it for you right now, but um, he's famous um, for, for saying something along the lines of, we committed the murders, we took the children from their mothers, we practiced discrimination and exclusion. It was our ignorance and our prejudice. Um, so that was one of the first times a Prime Minister really uh, acknowledged what had happened. And then the second speech I'm going to talk about is if Kevin Rudd's National Apology speech, uh, which happened at Parliament on the 13th of February 2008, and we call this the um, yeah, the, the National Apology or the Sorry speech. So uh, it's been voted by uh, a, a few different polls as uh, Australia's most famous and instrumental speech to happen in Australia. 1967 referendums is what we look at on the 27th of the month. So the referendum was a nationwide vote where Australians voted to change the following things on the national constitution. So which is the set of rules that explain the rights and equality of all the peoples of the country. So the first one is to include Indigenous people in the census. A census is when you count uh, all the people of your country. So this is acknowledging that yes, Indigenous people are Australian. They're not animals. Uh, it's a really important fact. Uh, another thing they changed was to allow laws to be made to benefit Aboriginals and the people of the Torres Strait Islands. So uh, part of that was 90% uh, of, of all Australians actually voted in favour of this, saying, yes, we do need to change the constitution because, yeah, it's very important that we acknowledge that Aboriginals are people. They are Australians. They were here before us. 
uh, and that they should have equal rights with us, uh, other Australians. Um, one thing that can be commonly uh, confused with it is this was not the day when uh, Aboriginals were given the right to vote. This was uh, earlier in 1962. The Mabo decision. So, uh, on the 3rd of June, 1992, a 10-year legal battle was won by a group of Indigenous Australians from the eastern Torres Strait Islands. The judgments of the court in Ma the Mabo case overturned the legal fiction of terra nullis, which I mentioned before, which meant the land belonged to no one. So, they said that this is not the case, and they said that the Indigenous peoples have lived here in Australia for many thousands of years, um, and basically, in short, uh, was the idea that um, the Native Title Act came from that on the 24th of December 1993, a year later, and that basically helped Australia, uh, Aboriginals in Australia to reclaim their land as their own and have rights uh, to say what, what should happen where they live. Um, so who was Eddie Marbo? So uh, he was someone who lived, he was someone who grew up in his ancestors' for many, many years, grew up in the east parts of Torres Strait Island, which is uh, above Queensland. And he and some other members of his community decided that they needed to have land rights because <laughs> they lived there and yet they didn't have any say in on what happened in that land, in the land they live in. Uh, so he was actually inspired by um, Vincent Lingangari. Uh, and there's a famous thing called the Wave Hill Walk-Off. So, yeah, feel free to watch that video. It's a yeah very important thing that happened in Australia's history of politics. But basically, uh, the idea is that it was a protest of 200 workers that worked at a, a cattle station in 1975, and they protested for uh, seven years because of unfair pay. Uh, and you might know the song, From Little Things, Big Things Grow, uh, by Paul Kelly. It was all about, the song's all about this. So... Uh, Vincent Lingari, uh and Gough Whitlam, so Gough Whitlam, the Prime Minister at the time, uh, he also had a famous speech and you can see here he's handing Vincent some, some soil uh, representing that they're giving the land back. Um, but it wasn't until M Eddie Marbo, until it wasn't just a token it was and symbolic, it was actually true and yes, they do have actual ownership of their land legally. So why are land rights important? Well, the first thing is self-determination, which just basically means um, being able to live the way that you want to live, getting to choose what to do. Uh, land royalties, which is the idea of you getting to, you deserve money or other rewards or things from things like mining or tourism or farming. So if a uh, a big cattle station wants to be built in your land, then they have to pay you money to do that because it's your land. Uh, protection over sacred sites. Um, so, yes, yeah, having the right and the final say to say whether tourists can come to your um, the place where you own um, or not. Um, so a lot of places people are allowed and some places you're not. So currently in Australia, we're not allowed to climb Uluru anymore or uh, what some people call Ayers Rock. Um, and yeah, maybe they'll change some of the traditional people, owners of that land might change their minds or maybe they'll keep it like that. But it's their right to make that decision. Um, being able to live out their traditions legally. So uh, I spent some time up in a remote Northern Territory where uh, some of the uh, people that lived there um, their tradition was to be able to catch turtle and eat the turtle eggs. Uh, in Australia, it's illegal to kill turtles uh, and eat them, but because uh, they've been doing it for thousands of years, um, they are allowed to not have to abide by that law because it's their land and that's just what they've done for thousands of years. And last one is just fairness. So it's, it's fair that um, all Australians should be allowed to choose to... Um, what they do and how they live. So if an Aboriginal wants to live off the land uh, and hunt and not get a job, whether that's their total right to do that, or they should also be given the opportunity in case they wanted to become a doctor to study at school and move to a city and, and 
live in a nice house and and yeah if that's their decision then they need to have the the equal rights to do that and not um have to be forced to make a decision so that's the idea of reconciliation all the best i hope you've learned something today